How's it going, everybody? Ed Ricker here with the Wingsland S6 in front of me for some reason. Uh, this is not a drone that I particularly like. I gave a rather scathing review of it a few months ago, uh, but it's been sitting in my closet for a couple months now. I didn't know what to do with it, and I said, hey, let's take this thing apart. Now, I've never taken apart a drone with, you know, GPS capability and sensors and stuff like that, so I'm kind of excited to see what's inside of this thing. So without concern for maintaining this particular drone's operational capability, let's dive right in. Ah, all right. So we're already kind of connected here with this little ribbon cable. So to my understanding, this is part of the downward division positioning right here. As you can see on the back, and we have this ribbon cable that is uh, connected to part of this particular board. Here's our SD card slot, our USB, or actually our micro USB, I should say. There's also some Chinese lettering here. We know this is a Chinese company, Wingsland. Inside we do have some Phillips screws, so that's good. We can get into this with a regular screwdriver now. Back in the day, my sister and I would take apart electronics just for fun, and we would put it all onto these uh, big poster boards, and it looked like some huge, huge motherboard that we were making, and we would call it the alien detector. We'd make it look like uh, we were detecting aliens different uh, alien signatures and stuff. I think we had a printout or maybe just a handwritten um, database of like 12 different alien species that we had come across. Now, as you see here, looks like a little camera. So this may be the downward vision positioning camera. And then these are just uh, sensors, maybe even like ultrasound sensors or something like that. I wonder if I can take this out. There it is. Ah, oh, okay. So the little Wi-Fi ribbon cable here has popped off. <laughs> now I think we can pull this out a little further. We have our springs here, which seem to give a little bit of spring to the arms as they pop out like that right there. And each one has a spring. Now here's the camera, which they said was uh, on a Axis gimbal. Yeah, right. There's proof that it's not. So this is a uh, kind of rubberized material around the camera designed obviously to uh, keep this thing from vibrating too much perhaps, but it's definitely not stabilized mechanically. This is an electronic stabilized camera. That right there is the 4K camera with the ribbon cables that attach it. Interesting. So this camera comes apart as well. There's that rubber housing and now this is just the camera. Wow, okay, so I just split the camera lens right there from the sensor. Look at that, this is awful for the sensor to be exposed to light like this. But uh, I guess we don't really care at this point. So this is what a 1 3rd inch CMOS 13 megapixel sensor for a camera looks like. Looks like I'm gonna have to unscrew the motors here or at least the motor arms to get this out any further. Now what I'm gonna do is cut the body of the drone right here so I can get the arm out. There we go. And I'm gonna do that four times for each arm. Whoops, well, that arm came off completely. Oh well. So, now that we have this all separated, it looks like we have just a few more things holding this in. There we go. <laughs> Bam. This says TF USB. So this is must be what's powering uh, the USB and the SD card. There we go. We can take this off now though. Let's take off this uh, black tape. Ooh, this would be great for the alien detector. Okay, we have a simple plug here. That's easy. So we have a couple plugs that are kind of being held. So these are the battery leads, and that was connecting the battery that was being held right here with the battery that butts up against those connections. So this must be the power distribution board, if it's anything like an FPV quad. Let's see. Yeah, you can consider that maybe the ESCs. Um, each arm goes to each pad here. Now here's our fan. So this thing does cool itself off with this little 
fan, which is nice. It's being powered right here. Let's just take that out. We'll unplug this, which was going to one of the um, lights back there. Yeah, so these are the LED lights. It says LED. It's the last thing connecting the top. Ah! There we go. Rip. <laughs> Now here's an interesting stack of things. Not entirely sure what everything is, but we have, uh, that could be part of the gyro. It's soft mounted. And then the compass. Oh, okay. Very simple. Not a whole lot to, uh, to show there. It's just a metallic back to it. Oh, it's the IMU. That's what that was. See, IMU. And that's why it's soft mounted with this foam. IMU stands for Inertial Measurement Unit. Uh, it's an electronic device that measures and reports the body's specific force, angular rate, and sometimes the magnetic field surrounding the body, according to Wikipedia. Underneath that is, looks like a compass. If, if this is uh, referring to this area, this is part of the compass. Um, I calibrate my compass nearly every time I take it out. I calibrate my IMU every once in a while, maybe a couple of weeks, maybe every month. Um, especially if there's an issue, if it's, if it's acting strange, then I'll definitely uh, calibrate the IMU. GPS right here, this is the ribbon cable that says GPS. I'm gonna pull that off. For those of you who are mechanically minded, engineers and such, you're probably screaming at me. <laughs> that's not that, that's this. Well, in the comments, let me know. Let me know if I'm saying anything wrong. So, ooh, taking off this interesting uh, coating. Maybe I'm about to poison myself. Some sort of mercury or plutonium. Maybe I should use uh, safety glasses. <laughs> yeah, let's use safety glasses at this point. Hmm, doesn't look like there's a whole lot of stuff that's interesting in there. Maybe it's just super sensitive and delicate. That's why they have it covered. Oh, we got a little battery here. Look, so this must be, um, look at that little battery. Oh, it's so cute. Aha, that was pretty easy. Just popped right off. It says U-Blocks. Looking up on the internet, U-Blocks is the GPS. I guess, could this be the PDB? Power distribution board? Potentially. I wasn't sure if this also contained the ESCs for these particular motors that are all hanging from it, you know? All right, now that brings us to this thing, which we haven't really gotten into much. We have some LED lights being led to here. Um, not a fan of the fact that we have all this plastic kind of housed around it, so I'm gonna take that off real quick. Oops, <laughs> that's not the way I thought it would come off, but there we go. So, uh, interesting little board right here. Oh, the mother load. Yep, this looks like where a lot of this processing is done. Take this off. Spansion. All right, I'm gonna look that up real quick. Flash memory, microcontrollers, mixed signal, and analog products. That's what Spansion Incorporated makes. So this is uh, one of those. Hynix, SK Hynix. South Korean memory semiconductor supplier for dynamic random access memory, DRAM chips, and flash memory chips. We'll take this uh, yellow tape off. And what is this? ARM. ARM3. I can barely read it. Microarchitectures. The ARM3 builds on the success of the ARM2 with higher performance through the, through the introduction of on-die cache, but without any major changes to the core itself. ARM is a family of bi-endian fixed-length instruction set architectures and extensions. It's widely used in mobile and embedded markets. Used in companies including Arm Holdings, Qualcomm, Apple, and Applied Micro. All right, brute force. Ugh. There we go. Just bend it. So this has something to do with the camera processing, I suppose. It says camera right there. It says USB right here. That right there was going to the IMU. All right, so 
I guess that's all I'm getting for that one. There we go. There's that little tiny fan. Look at this little tiny thing. Oh, look at that. Look at this thing. It's actually kind of heavy too. Cyrocom. This is the GPS. The GPS? I'm not entirely sure. Mm. Cyrocom L L O O five four. Seems to be some sort of patch antenna, I guess. So that's what it says anyway. Let's see if there's any way to get in deeper. There we go. Okay, so that just popped off. I wonder what's inside here. Can I get inside further? Is this a bad idea? Woo, that was easy. Okay, not a whole lot. First of all, that was very easy, which makes me think this is maybe some special material. Ooh, it's almost like a ceramic. Where have you been all my life? Look at this. So many layers. All right, let's peel this apart. Peel this back, rather. Aha, look at this. More good stuff. Wi-Fi, okay. Oh, an antenna. Look, these are antenna, I didn't even notice. And we have, it says Wi-Fi, but I'm, I'm willing to bet that this is some sort of receiver, but they look like they're snap-on. Yeah, snap-on antenna right there. I'm not sure if the camera's gonna, the camera probably won't pick it up, but yeah, there we are. So two antenna, very short antenna, by the way. Let's look inside these arms. I do want to see if these arms have any sort of uh, ESC built in them. Ah, yeah, okay. Just wires. So the ESC and all that stuff must be uh, contained in the board that we saw earlier. This one that I <laughs> snipped a chunk out of. So we're gonna have to take off this little thing here. Now here's one reason why I didn't like uh, how these props are uh, put on and, and, and taken off. You have to use a hex wrench or like a hex driver and there's two of those bolts. Once you get it off, see how you have two different props? Well, look at this little thing right there. <laughs> look at it and don't forget it because you're gonna probably end up dropping it. This, this entire thing can easily slip out right here, this. If you lose that, you're gonna have a very clanky and very loose prop but it's so small and they don't give you extras. So replacing a prop is such a pain in the butt. Yeah. So there's the interior of the motor with the stators and the little windings. I don't think that's gonna come off easily though. No, <laughs> I'm pulling the windings off. I don't think I can pull the stator off. Probably not without hurting myself, so I will probably stop there. Now this little lead right here, which I almost didn't notice, um, it's not labeled that I see. Actually, it is labeled. Aha, uh -huh, yes. The says EXT CON, which I assume is the extension connection, which would mean this part right here. Now we do know the Wingsland has a couple different accessories, like a searchlight. Uh, this little mini cannon thing and a couple other accessories, emoji display that you can hook onto this on the top and kind of uh, expand your experience. Well, I did not to do that. Ow. Well, that's how you cut yourself. So RX, TX, battery, five volt ground. Pretty simple, I suppose, pretty simple. So the piece right here that we bent off, I didn't even notice, that's the power button right there, which is that. Did I miss anything? Not really. At this point, I'm pretty sure the, the two shells are completely liberated from their circuitry. Nice, I guess that's it.
Now, there may be a few components here that I didn't identify correctly, or maybe you can tell me a little bit more about them. I'd love to know more about what it goes into a drone like this to make it operate. Um, again, I wasn't really a fan of the Wingsland S6, but hey, it gave me an opportunity to uh, dissect it. And so, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Uh, check edricker.com for a link to all the different things I use for the drones I like, not the Wingsland S6, unfortunately. And um, until next time, well, happy flying.